from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Pharmaceutical, biotech and biohacking company Psilocybin is in the process of listing on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in the hopes to expand its business both in South Africa as well as abroad. The company has ambitious plans to grow its cannabis business as well as introduce new health technology and devices. Company CEO and President Gabriel Theron speaks to Crema Media's Donna Slater about the Psilocybin's growth plans. We've started in 2018 as an idea of building a cannabis company. 2019 we actually started with our facility expansion or, or building of the facility. 2020 we got our cultivation license and 2021 we received our good manufacturing practices license that allows us to also do um, further extraction of a, of a raw material oil but then also take it into a final product. And to date, we believe we're still the only one in Africa that can do all three of those steps during the, the production phase. Where we want to go with the company is to supersize it in the third party manufacturing side for South Africa, for the industry, so that the industry can come to us and we can extract their products for them, take it into a final product and then service the whole world, but also South Africa when that time comes. The run explains how the company plans to use the capital raised by the JC listing. So it's probably two-fold or three-fold. Um, the first phase is to expand the, the cannabis company. So understand that the JC listing is a separate entity that is basically a fund that will come and acquire certain assets. The first target asset is the pharmaceutical based in Midrand and that is the cannabis cultivation company. Um, the first target is that one, to buy that one and to supersize its manufacturing capabilities for servicing the whole European market, um, Australia and, and, and even South Africa when that opens up, phase one. Phase two is to also venture into various other products um, and service offerings whereby we're looking at gen human genetic testing, um, lab results um, to, to all pull in and then to give customer nutrition per patient. So the, the goal of the company is cannabis becoming a product line, psychedelics becoming product lines as and when regulatory environments allow, but to actually ultimately give you a holistic health solution um, to the patient end of the day. This is a, uh, what they call an IPO, it's an initial public offering. It's from my understanding, the first one after Telcom, which has been quite a few years. And normally how it would work is your minimum investment would be about a million rand to participate. What we've done is we've lowered it so that we can have more people included in this process. So we lowered it to a thousand. You also don't need a broker. So we've, through JSE Investor Services, you can invest via them and they become your broker. So we've made it very, very accessible for everybody. Um, our ethos of the company is to be a people's company um, and hence we want to target you as an individual so that we can look after your health but we also want everybody to be part of this dream. So IPO is open from the 9th of September and will run until the 4th of November and it will then start trading on the JC on the 14th of November. We need to supersize the manufacturing portion of it. But currently our production is fairly small that we can manufacture the oil. We want to be that go-to stop for all the cultivators out there that they can bring the product here and we can literally process tons. Um, that's where we want to get to. So the first money to be spent is on that, but also on the EU GMP certification. So we want the EU GMP certification so that we can enter into the European market as soon as they allow for it. And looks like they're in the final stages of it and by 2025, 2026 the whole of European market will open up which will be the largest legal market outside of America. In the cannabis side it's definitely Europe um, that is going to be your, legal, your largest legal market outside of America. Also Australia as well as South America. America is currently closed, uh, they call it state locked even, um, so we can't export or import um, in, in those in America. That will change over time, but for now, our from a cannabis perspective, it's Europe. If you look at our other products, our longevity products, our performance products, those type of products, 
or devices that is a global market, mostly um, North America and Europe and then Far East. On the cannabis side, so we've got a CBD range that we launched in beginning 2022, um, January. That is a nanotech um, CBD that we've launched that's doing very well. It's not in the mainstream disc games in those places, it's more practitioner brand. Um, so that, that we've done and we, we're looking at expanding that now into a THC range that you can also get your hands on through the right channels, doctor prescription and section 21 in South Africa. But for the export market, that is a product that we are looking at growing into uh, as a final product. Mm -hmm. Then um, there are some exports that, we, that we've done to Australia in terms of flour, final package labeled flour to the Australian market. That's on the cannabis side of things. On the devices side, um, we've got a market in America, we've got a market in Australia also, um, that we've exported devices to already. And that's for tracking your overall health from a nervous system point of view, from a inflammation um, and various other indicators. South African National Roads Agency Limited in August completed and launched the N1 Musina Ring Road in Limpopo, and the Road Parastatal held a media visit to showcase the benefits challenges and complex processes involving bringing the almost 20 year long project to fruition. Tasneem Bulbulia was at the launch. The 700 million rand project entailed the construction of about 8 kilometers of Greenfield single carriageway freeway to form the western ring road around the town of Messina. The main aim of the project was to divert the N1 traffic away from the Messina CBD as thousands of heavy vehicles use the N1 daily and pass through the town. The ring road will now alleviate congestion, protect the town's roads from heavy vehicles, ensure more efficient and less fuel-intensive traveling, and contribute to improved mobility and the safe movement of goods, services, and people in and around Musina. The project entailed the construction of three major bridges, two interchanges, major earthworks, layer works and asphalt surfacing, six kilometers of secondary roads, stormwater and subsoil drains, road furniture finishes, and noise barrier walls. There is also scope for future expansion should traffic volumes increase. The project was noted to have generated 281 jobs for locals, while 132 people were trained by accredited training service providers. The project also aims to facilitate greater trade and economic activity between South Africa and its northern neighbor Zimbabwe through the Bait Bridge Border Post as well as other countries in the Southern African Development Community. This is showcased along the route through various hand structures, representing a hand of friendship being extended between South Africa and Zimbabwe. The project was first introduced by Sunral in 2004. Construction on the project began in 2016, following the appointment of Basil Reed as the main contractor. However, Robax Construction was later appointed when Basil Reed went into business rescue. Other complexities of the project included replanting several baobab trees and designing the road around trees that could not be moved, as well as replacing protected species that were removed. Also, a community relocation project was undertaken for homes that were removed along the route. In terms of infrastructure, the previous informal existing landfill site had to be relocated given that the road traversed part of this. A fortuitous benefit of the project was therefore that a new, formal landfill site was created, with Robax also providing the municipality with a guide and capacity for future expansion of the site. Other infrastructure relocation entailed moving large power lines that interfered with the route, with the team engaging with state-owned utility ESCOM in advance to ensure that this was handled correctly. There were also large cuttings going over an old copper mine dating from the late 1800s, which required various investigations to ensure that there would be no impact on the road, such as the formation of voids or tunnels. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.